For most of us, phrases like swords and sorcery and even things like Dungeons and Dragons evoke these depictions of these grand scenes of these muscle-bound heroes swinging an axe, slicing up these armies of enemies with a scantily clad female at his feet. Yes! This image owes an incalculable debt to Frank Frazetta, the late Brooklyn-born illustrator whose name is forever intertwined with Conan, Tarzan, and even Molly Hatchet. Ooh, I think this is gonna be my favorite episode. It's gonna be a good one. What I love most about Frank Frazetta's artwork is the primal feelings that it evokes. People have described his work as dramatic and powerful, emotional and expressive. He was really able to create an atmosphere in his artwork that you can really feel. It's like this other world that you can teleport into that seems completely there, despite being a total fantasy. Rosetta's weapons of fantasy warfare included watercolors, oils, inks, and pencils, which he used to create lush and captivating images full of glory, action, and purpose. Like what kind of stuff did he do? Well, Robot, Frank Rosetta was a commercial artist with his larger-than-life images leaping off of movie posters, book covers, and comics. He also helped to define the look of literary heroes like Robert E. Howard's Conan the Barbarian and Edgar Rice Burroughs' John Carter of Mars. He also illustrated the characters of J. J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, and even worked on some Battlestar Galactica. This guy's worked on a lot of stuff. Like, a lot. All right, class, now let's talk about some of my favorite Frank Frazetta paintings. Example one, Death Dealer from 1973. Oh. Here is one of Frank Frazetta's arguably most famous painting. We have a frightening warrior in armor with a horned helmet sitting atop a brooding stallion. Notice the vultures in the background give the ominous feeling like there's a bunch of corpses around. They're getting ready to eat them. The environment feels like this battle has just taken place. And the central focus of the warrior's threatening eyes is looking directly at the viewer as if he's just killed a bunch of people and he sees you peeping on him and you're next. Oh. <laughs> There is a very supernatural and ghostly element to Death Dealer. And this is just a painting that dudes just go ape shit for. They just, they love this painting. I really love this painting. This is a painting for dudes, by dudes. <laughs> and fun fact, the Death Dealer painting was so popular that it went on to spawn its own novel series following its creation. That's right, people loved this character so much that they had to write books about him, all right? A novel series? What's that about? Well, Robot, the first book in the series is called Prisoner of the Horned Helmet. And in it, we have Goth of Ball. He's just a man, although he's not just any man. He's a total badass. His parents were killed in front of him when he was a kid, and he's been on his own in the forest, just like being a fucking badass in the forest. Yes, badass. And then there's this horde of invaders called the Kizaks, right? And they're like taking over the land. And this chick named Cobra is like heard of this guy in the forest. She's like, man, we could use his help. She goes to the forest. She leaves this mystical helmet that like is possessed by the god of death, right? And then like as soon as Goth touches this friggin' helmet, he cannot take the helmet off and he's turned into the death dealer. Wow, so he was a badass who became an even better badass. Yes. This is the kind of story that I've been waiting for. We'll go to the used bookstore later, okay, Robot? We'll see if it's there. Three other novels would follow his adventures. Oh. And years later, there's a comic book series as well, then a role-playing game. That's how popular this one painting was. It spawned four books, comics, role-playing games, which spawned a slew of other Death Dealer paintings. Oh, 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 show me, show me. <laughs> All right, calm down, Robot. Here we have Death Dealer 2. He's no longer on his horse, and he's just chopping people up the old-fashioned way while standing on a pile of his victims. Oh, man. Death Dealer 3, we have Death Dealer just hanging out, contemplating life, and possibly death. And some skeletons. You have to chill out. Stop and smell the death. Here we have Death Dealer 4, where he's getting ready to fight a giant lizard creature in a swamp. Oh, swamps. This is right up your alley, robot. With another dead guy in the bottom, too. Well, though, yeah, I mean, yeah. The series continues with Death Dealer 5. Here he is on the castle walls, throwing bitches over the side of the wall with his ax. Yeah, get him. It's pretty crazy. Ah, uh, this is the best class I've ever taken. And finally, we have Death Dealer 6. Here he is back on top of his horse, only this time he's battling a snake. A snake. An evil snake. Scary. Cool, this is so cool. 
Now let's move on from Death Dealer to one of my personal favorite Frank Rosetta works. Example number two, Woman with the Scythe from 1974. This sword and sorcery image has a witchy woman seemingly casting a spell. And I was so inspired by this work that I did my own Frank Frazetta styled cosplay based around this image. You did? Well, let's see it. Here it is. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Wait a minute, wait, where's, the, where's the hair? You didn't do the hair right. I know, I, the wig got all messed up. It didn't work out at all, so I just had to ditch it and go with my own hair, but it worked out great. Mm, I don't see a giant lizard in there either. Well, you know, I'm working on a budget here, right? <laughs> Give me a break. I did, however, have a snake. <laughs> well, then I'll pass you. Example three, we have Conan the Destroyer from 1971. Like Death Dealer, there would be many Frazetta Conan paintings. This one in particular shows him just killing a bunch of people single-handedly as they're piling up dead beneath him. Yes. You can't really get more macho than this. Macho. Anyways, this painting was later sold in 2010 as the highest valued piece of Frazetta artwork of all time, bought by a private collector for $1.5 million. Wow, it was worth every penny. I wonder where I wonder where he put it. Like, is it in like his, is it in like his kitchen? I would mount it on the ceiling of my bedroom. Fun fact: the Destroyer painting was actually a revision of an earlier painting, Conan the Buccaneer. Ah, teacher, why did he repaint it? Well, Space Brain, if you notice, Conan doesn't have any weapons. He's strangling a guy with his like bare hands. And Frank said that he felt like he wanted to give Conan a fighting chance. So he repainted him, this time with a battle axe. Oh. Greater Creators is a study of creative icons who push the boundaries of art and whose influence can still be felt today. So take a seat, class is in session.